Our project is dead in the water, but I am not giving up because every good engineer has a contingency plan. More engineering discovery, let's get into it. As always, everything in software is more annoying than it needs to be for good reason, like stability and security, all of which I do not care about in a personal project. I mean, enterprise level production deployment at work? Yeah, I care. But for a personal project? Nah, ain't nobody got time for that. So what's annoying? I went down the rabbit hole and I won't bore you with the details, but there are pretty much only two solutions when automating YouTube uploads. The first one, and we already know it, use Zapier. Here's their announcement back in 2016. You can use Zaps to automatically post videos to your YouTube channel. The plan was to use this. You would get your video up into Google Drive or somewhere and then you would just kind of let Zapier do its thing but my intuition was tingling. I thought to myself, setting up Zapier would probably take something like 15 minutes, and that's a pretty good amount of time to turn a spike into a POC, right? And because Zapier is a large organization, things should be stable and they should work, right? Wrong. Not even big orcs seem to have any pull on Google these days. Zapier's YouTube API usage is hitting quota limits and they need to ask Google for a bump. Here's what happened when I tried to connect my YouTube account to my Zapier account. It seems like it's working, but then immediately the account says it's expired. I did do some Googling and apparently the issue started on January 19th. A lot of people are pretty angry. 20 messages times 13 pages that's a lot of angry people. This is the issue that they're probably hitting. Projects that enable the YouTube data API have a default quota allocation of 10,000 units per day. A video upload costs 1,600 units. With how big Zapier is, pretty sure they have way more than 10,000, but still, 1600 per video is quite a bit and because they're popular a lot of people are probably trying to do this so much so that they can't even do a one unit read operation anymore to verify that your account got connected so why am i fixated on using zapier as a solution even though i have a lot of years of dev experience and i can just write the code myself to use the youtube api well one why waste time and effort doing it myself when zapier does it for free and i can set it up in 15 minutes and two because i have messed with google's apis before and let me tell you they Hey, there's something else. Getting started with a test app, pretty easy, but getting it into production and using it with an actual real Google account, you're gonna have to go through some hoops. There's no way around it. This means that our second and only other option is to use Google's YouTube API. To do this, I'll need to create an app on their cloud platform and then publish it. Sounds easy, right? Nope. Specifically for the YouTube API, if you want to verify your app and publish it, you need to go through their audit form. And let me tell you, it's like every other Google thing, super involved. So involved that you need to provide your organization's name and address and all that stuff that a lot of normal people don't have. So you might be thinking, what happens if you use the pre-published app or the test app for your automation for production? The answer is they set your video as spam and private. This article shows that all unverified API projects created after July of 2020 must go through an audit to see if they are a fit for Google's terms and services. This is why we don't see a lot of third-party platforms do this automation thing with Google because it's super involved. The ones that want to go the legit way will hit all these roadblocks and barriers and the ones that don't probably use headless browsing. And even then, Google has a lot of anti-abuse and robot detection type of algorithms to make sure that you can't use headless browsing for automation. I've tried it out, just take my word for it. So anyway, I kind of lied. We're not exactly dead in the water. We're just forced to use the YouTube API, but we're going to build this thing out one way or another. I'm going to make this work. However, I am hoping that while I'm building other parts of the system, Zapier fixes their connection issues or their quota limits with YouTube, and I won't have to deal with the YouTube API. But remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. The only positive part about all this, this whole experience, is that we have not written a single line of code yet, and that means we have not wasted any effort or time. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.